we are demoing out this whole bathroom and we're going to be replacing the mirror and lighting. So first, obviously we have to take out this old mirror. If you open it up, um, you can see that there's four screws on the top and the bottom. It's smarter to start removing the screws at the bottom. That way when you get that last screw out, it all doesn't come tumbling down on your head. And I'm also here to help catch. I'm going to hold it in place so as a safeguard. One. That's at an awkward angle. I might need a longer. Take your time. <laughs> I might need a longer bit. If you flip it upside down. Oh, okay. There you go. Lovely. I'm like the queen of stripping nails. Screws. <laughs> Screwdrivers have difficulty biting and <laughs> ends of nails. <laughs> oh. Oh. Someone once told me that if you do strip a screw, which I didn't quite that time, that if you get a little rubber band and you put it at the end of your bit, then it will grab the screw again. I've tried that. Somebody lied to her. No. <laughs> it doesn't work. It works for me. Okay, maybe it's just me. Use our arrow. <clears throat> okay. Here we go. Moment of truth. Okay. Let's pull it off and see if it comes. So. It's still, it's all tiled oh, in. Oh, it's so tiled in. Let's just get a hammer. And we'll just tap this loose a little bit. If you don't want to remove the tile, then you can get a, um, a razor blade knife with a carbide blade and you just score work, it. Yeah, just work out all the, the grout around there and then you'll have to replace that. But we're taking all this tile out, so we're not going to be as careful. It's coming. Hit it. Here we go. Ooh. Hey! Okay. There's a there's a mystery hole in the wall. <laughs> we'll plaster that in, and uh, or yeah, we'll just sheetrock all that and make it an actual full wall. It looks like they actually had a recessed medicine cabinet in here first, and then they replaced it with a medicine cabinet that's not recessed. Take up more space. Yep. <laughs> okay, light. Yep, light. So these kinds of lights are actually super common and... Whoops. <laughs> broom, broom. <laughs> Don't work with broken glass everywhere. I'm serious, let's get a broom sweep. I feel like everyone has or had this light fixture in yeah. their bathroom. I know we have it in ours. And I don't see any way of getting it off the wall. Yeah, these ones, it's not obvious at first, but each of these metal rings, they're just kind of on their pressure. So you take each of these off, take the bulbs out, and don't drop them. After those are off, this should just... <laughs> and then you can see the screws. Yep. So we'll just take the screws out. And of course, if, you, uh, if you're replacing a light that has the same footprint as the light that's in place, um, you may want to leave this, your light in place while you work on the rest of the bathroom. Um, because we need to do some sheetrock work around here, it's a different light that's going in. We're taking it out now. We'll use flashlights as we need. Um, so that we can see, but that way we can get the wall all smooth before we put the new light in. Before we start unhooking wires, we want to make sure that we're not dealing with any live wires. Um, if you don't have a circuit tester, um, what you do is you can put a bulb back in, um, turn the light on, so we're live here, um, and then I'll have somebody flip that off. As soon as this goes off, then I know that the power 
um, is off, we'll, we'll turn off the breakers. Um, and as soon as this goes off, then we know that it's safe to unhook this, cap the wires until we're ready. Yep, there it is. Um, so I'll unhook this and uh, then we'll cap the wires and be ready to go. So keep your caps on because we're going to restore power here. Now that we have those things removed, we're going to do quite a bit more work in here before we're ready to put everything back in. We need to fill this um, hole in the wall. Um, we'll sheetrock that, mud it, texture everything so everything's nice and smooth and we'll be ready to put the new equipment in. We're ready to put the light in place. A couple things to explain about our situation here. It's a little bit different. We uh, consulted with um, our electrician to make sure that we were doing everything, um, you know, up to up to standard. Because this entire wall back here is cinder block, there's no two by fours or anything like that. There was not a box right here. Um, the fixture that we're using allows us to house the wiring actually in the fixture so we're going to just mount directly to this which is it's not standard i understand that um, but the way that we can do this is we can mount this right here off to the side help us center up the uh um, put the fixture center with the vanity and then when we put the cap over it has an oval that will come over and cover this and the wiring can all be housed within there. Um, ideally, when you have two by four walls, you can move the boxes over, or you can put in a remodel box that just attaches to the wall treatment, whether it's sheetrock or paneling like this. For us, everything about this project has been a little bit different. So we're gonna attach this here and then um, we're going to have to use some concrete anchors to actually get it to attach into the concrete itself. But then we'll be able to put the light on. We have our power turned off just as a reminder before we start actually messing with any of the wires. Make sure that the power is turned off. Um, we have just a cord running from somewhere else to give us some light so we can work on this. So now I'm ready to actually hook up the light fixture. Hooking up the wires, a lot of times it's uh, fairly simple. There's usually a black wire coming out of the wall. Your black wire goes into that. You have the white wire coming out, white goes into that. Ours is actually yellow because we have some um, outdated wiring. But um, And then you have your ground wire that goes into the ground. If you do not have a ground wire coming out of your wall, then often there's, um, like this unit here, there's a, a green screw and that's what you actually attach your wire to and that grounds the electricity in case there's some sort of electrical event and instead of feeding it into the house and causing a fire it takes uh, the energy and disperses it and eventually terminates it into the ground um, so we are we are lucky enough that we have all three of them here so we're going to hook those up. If we didn't, then we would have to actually notch out the wall, break it in there because we don't want to attach a ground line to this plate because it's attached to the wood. Again, that's just our case because this house is old. The fixture is in. We put a light bulb in it, tested it. It works, which, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, so now the mirror is the next part for us to put up. Uh, this is, this mirror it hangs up kind of a little differently. It has two little clips here on the side. Um, and you can see on the back of the mirror, if I flip this around, exactly where they grip here on the metal. So we are going to take a bunch of measurements. We're going to be very careful with that first of all. Um, take a bunch of measurements. We'll get this uh, held up where we want to, make a mark on the wall, and then we will um, measure from our mark to make sure that we're level with the, the ceiling, that we're even from 
um, the vanity and uh, I think this wall is a bit out of skew and so we'll want to make it level with whichever line is most dominant which will be the vanity because it's the one that's closest and so you want it to be even there and there's enough space here where you won't be able to tell. The mirror came with a few things. We have these heavy duty anchors which will actually be perfect for uh, the concrete. Uh, going into the concrete wall and hammer these in and they'll hold really tight. Um, and then you have the actual hangers here which we get these in the wall and then um, we have our Allen wrench that it came with and there's a couple of places here where you can unscrew things. This first one, if you take that out, you don't want to take it out all the way because if you lose those things they're gone forever. But the bottom comes out. This is the part that actually gets attached to the wall and then this goes on and you just use the Allen wrench to tighten it back down. Um, the other part is the actual angle of the mirror, so you loosen that and that allows us to turn this part. So since we're coming out of the wall here, we'll be able to turn this and that will change the angle of the mirror. So I'm going to have my wife come in here. Jules, you want to come in? Yeah. Need a pencil. Here's one. And um, let's hold this mirror up. So you want to grab on the other side there and just say when you think it's high enough. Well, it needs to go over, over. Todd. Okay. Um, but I like since to... It'll be, since it'll be out a little bit, mm -hmm. we can probably overlap this just a smidge to get it even, like centered. Well, actually, I guess we'll It looks pretty it. centered looks pretty right centered. now. Yeah. And I would say when you're trying to find a height for your mirror, go from the top of your sink and not necessarily the backsplash, and you want some breathing room up by the light. If it was up here, it feels uncomfortable. So I think dropping it just a few inches, that almost makes it equidistant from the top of the mirror to the bottom of the light and the bottom of the mirror to the top of the sink. So I think right there is perfect. Okay, so where this metal bracket is that's on the back, I'm going to mark right in the middle Should we make of that. sure it's level first? Well, I'm just going to mark one side. Okay. And then we'll take the mirror off and just set it right here for now. Okay. So go from that side to that side, 23 and 5 eighths is the total width. So that means that we want the gap from here to the other side to be 23 and 5 eighths. So we'll measure um, down from here and we'll get the same distance over on that side so that'll be level with this. The screw holes here, they actually line up um, once they're in place with the edge of here, of where the mirror sits. And that was, we needed that distance to be 23 and 5 eighths. We're going to give ourselves probably a quarter of an inch total difference, so that'll give us an eighth of an inch breathing room on either side. Um, but if we put the edge screws, this screw, and then the other screw on this side, um, 23 and 7 eighths apart, adding that quarter inch, then the mirror will fit right inside there. That's, yeah, fingers crossed. So we're going to put that in place using our anchors and check back to see if our math was correct. <laughs> pre-drilled the hole and started nailing this in and it turns out I did not make the hole deep enough and so you can see that the screw and the anchor is all bent out of shape. So this one is no longer any good but it's okay. Uh, there used to be a vanity back in here if you remember and so there's actually a wood stud right here that will save me one of the anchors. Um, just got lucky but make sure that you drill the holes deep enough to where the, uh, the screw will, uh, the whole anchor will fit in. So I'm going to go a little bit further. We 
We've got these in place now. And uh, the good thing is these holes don't have to be perfectly level because uh, these just kind of move around on it. But we're gonna get, tighten this little Allen screw. But we'll leave it a little loose so we can turn it around. Well, actually it'll fall down if I do that, so I'll have to tighten that, tighten that a little bit more. Now we can get the glass and put it in place here. I'm going to first loosen up these screws on the back. Otherwise the glass won't fit in. Let's all the way down. Okay. So we'll open that up. We've got the uh, mounts in place and anchored in. So now we will put in the mirror. We took off the bottom and just then we're going to go up and in at an angle. Lift up and go slide right into there. Gotcha. And then we'll just tilt it as we go down, being very careful not to scratch the front. And then as soon as we get to the metal, What do you do? Oh, let's lean it out a bit. Okay. okay. You're still not quite down there. Stand it off? Nope. Yeah. It's like catching it. Okay. Try undoing that one on the top. Just a little bit more. Okay, let's try it. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so get it, so it's in the, uh, you can see that there are ridges in the metal clip. Mm -hmm. So the screws should go down into the ridges. So lean it forward like so. And if you hold it like that, I've got a special tool here okay. that we're gonna use. So can you hold both sides? Um, yeah, I got it. Got it, He's so. heavier than you think. <laughs> and he leaves. I'll be back soon. <laughs> but seriously, this is getting really heavy. Okay. Okay, with this in place, we have a little retrofitted tool here. It's just a socket wrench with the uh, a quarter inch um, socket. And then we put our Phillips head bit right inside. And so you can get back into this small space. What's up, babe? Something I can help you with over there? I'm just so thinking how bad that hurt. So before I put the last one in, we will take our measuring tape. Always looking for it. There it is. <laughs> and we'll measure the bottom, make sure it's the same. So we're at one and three eighths. That is one and a quarter. So we'll untighten this I'd one. rather it be higher. <clears throat> Are you sure? Because if it can be down just a smidge, then I only have to do one screw. Okay. So. <laughs> Okay, mirrors installed, lights are installed, they work, and they look really great. It's amazing what, whether you're doing a whole bathroom renovation or just looking for a little upgrade, a mirror and a light is a very inexpensive, quick way that you can give your whole bathroom a lift.